Join us on our website at www.thegrandview.org and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting. I'm so excited about our painting today. The Grand Canyon is one of my favorite places to paint, and especially the North Rim. The vistas from up here are just spectacular and make for a very unique painting. So without further ado, let's get started. Now we're doing a vertical canvas, so there's very little sky in this particular painting. There's so much foreground, so I'm going to bring up the whole foreground about this much into my composition. You have to make sure that everything on your canvas is smaller than what you see in nature. You have to shrink everything down. The tendency is to paint everything too large. And if you want to get the whole scene into your painting, you're going to have to start shrinking everything down. There's a dead tree towards the right of my composition. I'm not sure if I'm going to put all of that in. I'm just going to put in a little footnote to see how it works. Now I'm going to switch to a larger brush. And one of the important things about painting, especially early in the morning, is that you have to indicate all the shadows. And there's definitely a direct line that the sun creates at the edge of the, the canyon in the distance. All of these formations sticking out into the canyon all are casting shadows. So what I'm doing is I'm creating all these shadows at exactly the same angle. You can almost follow the shadow and find out where the sun is. I'm going to take some more of that blue and I'm going to very quickly just put a stain in for my sky. Make sure the negative and positive shapes are correct. Make sure that these, these shapes, this air in here, this negative shape of the canyon against this positive shape of the rock in the foreground, that this area in here feels correct. I'm going to take some time and mix up a darker variation of my tone to put in all the little cracks and crevices in my rocks. It's always good to try to get a lot of these dark areas in first. And I'm also going to put in the shadow for some of my trees. And now with my sketch done, we're ready to start painting. I'm going to put my little detail brush down and pick up a larger brush. And I'm going to mix white, cobalt blue, a lizard crimson, and a little tiny bit of yellow. Now you want to paint this area kind of a grayish color. There's a fire nearby, so it's causing the sky to be a little bit hazy. And take that exact same color, add more white and a little bit more yellow. And as you get down to the horizon, put it in a lighter color. As the sky reaches the horizon, it gets lighter. I added a little bit of yellow in there to get it warmer. And you want to create the feeling that the sky is getting warmer as it's coming down to the canyon. Just blend it so it's nice and soft. And then take almost pure cobalt blue and just paint the top of your canvas with pure cobalt blue. And I'm just going to hint the clouds just above the horizon. It just has a feeling of a little haze and clouds resting over the canyon. Now with our sky done, we're ready to start working on the canyon. The canyon is exactly the same color as the sky, except it's darker. So what we want to do is create a darker tone of our original sky color, and that was cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, and cad yellow. I'm taking advantage of the opportunity to recorrect my sketch whenever possible. I'm going to separate all of my mountains with this bluish haze. Now remember what I said early on, that these shadows are going to be the same color as my mist in the valley. I'm going to bring that right up to the very edge of my sky and I'm going to blend it. You don't want a hard edge on the edge of your canyon. 
just slightly blend the edge. So what's going to happen is that this big, huge, massive edge of a canyon on the other side is going to be lifted by all this mist. The whole thing will be shrouded in this wonderful grayish mist, almost releasing it from the canyon and causing it to float. Now I'm going to put down my big brush and pick up a small brush. And I'm going to start paying attention to all the little details on the other side of the canyon. And just with this blue, you can cut into your base color and just create the feeling of cracks and crevices. And you can see that very quickly, you're recreating the entire canyon with just a few brush strokes. I can also take my brush and use a little bit of turpentine and wipe off some of that bluish color that I just put on and expose the color underneath and actually give the feeling of a painted canyon already. The nice thing about this is that there's just a little blue haze left on the canvas that creates that haze in the valley. So my haze is getting a little deeper in there. Now with our detail done in our background, we're ready to start doing the next layer of mountains. I'm going to still work with a small brush, but I'm going to darken this value. Again, just like with my background mountain, I want to shroud the base of my mountain in mist. This rock has a little more detail, so what I'm going to do is mix up a little brighter color. This is my yellow, and my white, and my alizarin crimson. And I'm going to start painting a little bit of the detail. I'm going to let some of the underneath color show through, but I also want to create some of these neat mountain tops. Just want to create just a little bit of detail. I'm really making sure that this color is definitely darker than the one behind it. But it has to be darker and cooler, which means there's a lot of blue. I've introduced a little bit more white just to get a little bit more atmosphere in my canyon. A little bit lighter down at the base. Get this color down deep into the canyon. I'm going to mix up yellow and blue together, mix up a nice green color. This will be little hints of trees. We're actually, this mountain is starting to come closer than the other mountains, so you're going to see more detail. A little bit more yellow and white. I'm going to start putting a little bit more detail in my cliff area here. Every angle that trees can grow on, you want to kind of put that in. So put a little detail in at an angle so that the trees look like they have something to hold on to. And right now, I like the light that's on this mountain. This is a little bit later in the afternoon, but this mountain will look to me as being very significant. And spend some time here just really putting in all the cracks and crevices. This will take a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Okay, now with all that in, we're ready to start putting the highlights in on these rocks. Taking my time and putting these rocks exactly where I see them. I'm going to introduce a little bit more yellow in, because I've decided that I want to make this my main focal area. So I really want to bring the light into it. Some horizontal and vertical strokes to help break up the movement of my brush. Now as this gets further down, we want it a little darker. And let it disappear into this mist of blue. Most people are intimidated by this huge, vast canyon, but once you, once you realize that you can simplify a lot of it, it's not such a great mystery. And to be out here and listening to the birds and having this whole place to yourself really makes the experience wonderful. And now with all my details done in the background, we're ready to start working in our foreground. And I want to show you that I can pop out a rock. A few brush strokes. So what I did was I highlighted the top of the rock and now I'm just putting in a little shadow. Remember the shadow has a little bit more cool color in it. I like thinking of rocks as boxes. You don't want to think of them as big round objects because they'll end up looking like huge potatoes in your painting. So think of them as boxes with angles and shapes and forms and sides and bottoms. And we're just going to highlight the rocks just at the very edge. And you can see how much brighter that is than the highlights previous. Now with that done, we're ready to start putting in our branches. Now where these branches go up against the blue, 
really take some time and do some beautiful little forms. Be very careful at this point. Now the reason why I can get such fine lines is because I've got lots of turpentine on my brush. Now some of these branches are light. They have a little bit of light hitting them. And now with all the little branches done, we're ready to start bringing in the foliage. Just drag the brush slightly over your canvas. Notice how I change the angles constantly. My brush is going in all different directions. You do want to try to concentrate on that light that we first saw when we first came out here. The rest of it is then in a little darker color. So I'm going to introduce more blue, just bring a little bit of variations of color into this bush. Other areas I'm going to very carefully put in a few little sky holes into my tree and cover up some of those orange areas. You see I can create a lot of branches just by putting in negative shape. A little bit of time and careful brush work. You start seeing the whole thing start to take shape. We had a little bit more white just at the tip. I want that light to really be strong right there. Notice I'm just using the tip of the brush. Now with our foliage done, we're ready to sign the painting and conclude this wonderful day at Grand Canyon. Expanded instructional DVDs that feature an hour-long demonstration of today's painting and other paintings in the series are available at the Grandview by calling 1-800-511-1337. Join us on our website, thegrandview.org, and get more information about our show. There you can download our free book, Everything You Need to Know About Outdoor Painting, along with a free diagram of today's subject. It's funded in part by... PaintingFromNature.com a website for artists seeking inspiration, advice, and knowledge to master painting from nature. PaintingFromNature.com